Did you know that Chicago is the slowest growing metropolitan area in the entire U.S.? In fact, after its population peaked in 1950, Chicago has lost nearly 1 million residents, and between 2020 and 2021, it lost over 45,000 residents just in one year. While there are some great things about Chicago, there also has to be a reason why this city's population is decreasing. Well, today on Across the Globe, we're going to be looking at the reasons people aren't moving to Chicago. Number one, there's lots of crime. Did you know that over the past five years, crime in Chicago increased by almost 20%? That's right, crime in Chicago has gotten worse and it doesn't seem like this trend is reversing anytime soon. For instance, according to a report from the Chicago Police Department, between 2021 and 2022, crime increased by 41%. While categories like robbery and burglary have seen decreases in recent years, theft, and in particular, motor vehicle theft, have increased dramatically. Number two, it's expensive. Another reason people may be leaving Chicago is because of the cost of living. A significant number of people left Chicago during the coronavirus pandemic, for instance, likely in search of more affordable areas where they could work remotely. According to Payscale, Chicago is 22% more expensive than the national average. And probably as no surprise to you, the main variable driving this is the cost of housing which is estimated to be a whopping 54% higher than the national average. According to Rent Cafe, the average monthly rent of a one-bedroom apartment is $2,224. Compare this to the average monthly rent of an apartment nationwide, which is only $1,718, and you'll see why the cost of living may be driving people away. Number three, it's windy. You've probably heard of Chicago's nickname, the Windy City. And while a little bit of wind probably doesn't sound too bad at first, I'm not talking about a little bit. I'm talking about winds on top of freezing temperatures, which can make stepping outside in the winter pretty miserable. Now, I will note that Chicago isn't the windiest city in the entire U.S. In fact, it ranks number 12 in terms of wind speed when compared to other cities. But again, it's the combination of wind and cold during the winter months that can be pretty brutal. Number four, the public schools are bad. If you have a family and are considering moving or leaving somewhere, you likely take the quality of local public schools into consideration. Well, Chicago's public schools are pretty poorly rated. Not only are they in the bottom 50% of schools in the state of Illinois, but they fare poorly when compared to schools across the entire country. When it comes to national numbers, the U.S. has an average 38% proficiency in math and 46% in reading, meaning that the majority of students are scoring below what they should in these subjects. That probably sounds bad enough to you, but those numbers end up looking pretty good when compared to Chicago's public schools. When it comes to Chicago's public elementary schools, for instance, they have an average math proficiency of only 17% and an average reading proficiency of only 21%. Considering that the foundation for higher level skills are laid during these early years, these numbers are alarmingly low. What this means is that if you send your kid to public school in Chicago, unless they're an outlier, they're probably not going to be developing adequate math and reading skills to prepare them for the real world. Number five, there's tons of traffic. If I asked you to picture Chicago, you'd probably draw up an image in your mind of skyscrapers, the Chicago River, or Lake Michigan. But what's missing from that picture is bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. That's right. In 2021, the Windy City's traffic ranked third worst in the nation and seventh worst in the world. That's even after a 40% decrease in congestion during the coronavirus pandemic. It scored particularly poorly in categories like hours lost from driving and cost per driver. 
and things don't seem to be turning around from 2021. In fact, they've gotten a lot worse. In 2022, Chicago ranked the worst in the country for its traffic. Number six, public transportation isn't great. I just talked about how bad traffic can be in Chicago, and I can hear what you're thinking. Why not just use public transportation? Well, that would seem like the logical conclusion, except for the fact that Chicago's public transportation has seen better days. For instance, crime has recently spiked along the Chicago Transit Authority, or CTA, train system. 2022 saw a 17% increase in violent crime that took place along the L, which is apparently the most violent year in 20 years. And while the Chicago Police Department has tried to take measures to combat this, they're currently struggling to do so due to shortages of officers. According to CBS News, the Chicago Police Department is currently lacking about 1,400 officers. Number 7. The winter feels never ending. I touched on this a bit when I talked about all of the wind Chicago experiences, but not only is winter in Chicago harsh, it's long, and that can make it that much more unbearable. Online, message board after message board is filled with people listing winter as the biggest con of living in Chicago. And most of the reason for that is because it can drag on forever. But Chicago doesn't just get long-lasting snow, it gets lots of snow. In recent years, Chicago has seen anywhere from 33 to 48 inches of snow per year. January and February in particular is where it can get really bad. In the winter of 2020 to 2021, for instance, January and February saw a combined total of 43.5 inches of snow. Number 8. There's a high tax burden. Chicago has one of the highest tax burdens in the country. In fact, a recent report showed that Chicago was the second worst in the nation when it comes to tax burden behind only Tacoma, Washington. What's driving this? Well, part of the reason is sales tax. Chicago has a 10.25% sales tax, which is 2.5% higher than neighboring cities like Naperville or Wheaton. But it's not just high sales tax that contributes to a high tax burden for Chicagoans. Property tax has also increased significantly in recent years. According to a report from the Cook County Treasurer's Office, the median homeowner's tax bill increased almost 8% between 2020 and 2021, with reasons for this increase including factors like property assessments increasing, gentrification, and new Illinois property taxes. Number 9. Parking is terrible. Parking in Chicago falls under what's known as the Dibs system. This is about as sophisticated as it sounds. During the winter, residents will shovel out parking spots on the street for their cars, but what happens when they leave those parking spots to, say, go to the grocery store? How do they lay claim to that spot so that when they come back, it's still there waiting for them? And the blood, sweat, and tears that they spent shoveling it out won't be all for nothing. Well, people use what's called the dibs system and put whatever junk they can find to lay claim to that spot. Picture upside down garbage cans, chairs, traffic cones, or whatever other random object makes it clear that spot is yours. If this sounds like a crazy system to you, you'd be right. While Chicago is starting to crack down on it and remove furniture found in the street, it's not fully obsolete, and it may be a while before it fully goes away. Number 10. The economy is struggling. The unemployment rate in the nation is currently 3.4%. In Chicago, it's almost a full percentage point higher at 4.3% and this city ranks second and last in terms of job recovery after the pandemic. Where things are really bad, though, is when it comes to small businesses. According to the Chicago Tribune, crime has caused real harm for Chicago's small businesses, like local shops and restaurants. This is because in areas that have seen an uptick in crime, people tend to patronize small businesses in those areas less frequently. This has negatively affected people across the board. 
Not only are small businesses struggling to get customers and stay afloat, but customers aren't wanting to go out and patronize these businesses because of an increase in crime, which in turn reduces their lifestyle quality. What about the warmest states in America? Watch this video to see our list.